Hi there, Kotaku. Kirk Hamilton here. I'm at GDC with Mike Bithel, uh, Thomas was a lone creator, and we're looking at his new game, Volume, which is a cool-looking kind of uh, stealth game that takes some some notes from Metal Gear. And uh, so, uh, Mike, why don't you why don't you talk us through this game and show us a little bit of it? Okay. Um, so yeah. So as you say, it's kind of it's an old school kind of stealth game. Um, I've been working on it for about a year now with some some awesome folk. Uh, it's kind of a, a modern day retelling of Robin Hood, kind of cyberpunky Robin Hood, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to go into actually, I'll start with like a really quite a big, big map actually, just so you can get a, a good feel for it. Uh, so there's no killing in the game. You can't sneak up behind people and snap their neck. Um, partly that's because like, you know, there's enough games about that. But also it's because I'm aware that when I play stealth games, um, I, no matter what the cool gadgets, no matter what I've got in my bag, I always just you know walk up behind people and, and snap their necks. Uh, so in this game, you use a series of gadgets to basically to distract guards, to crowd control, to basically take the environment uh, to where you want. Oh, I've been seen. Uh, so I'm going to reset actually. Uh, <laughs> it's just so it's a easier. It's a challenging game. Then, I guess. It's a challenging game. I'm going to get seen again there as well because I'm an idiot. Um, it is a challenging game, but crucially, like the resets are instantaneous. Um, which for me, it's like I wanna, I wanna try things out. I wanna, you know, try and take my chances and do things in a clever way. Um, I don't want to be constantly worrying about like a two-minute loading time. Um, right, you're losing a lot of progress. Yeah, it's just it's frustrating. So the game has like as many checkpoints as you you would need. It's got. Um, it's not cruel in that sense. Um, I want players to, you know, to play and be clever and try interesting solutions to puzzles. Uh, so here I've got the uh, the bugle here. It's one of the starting gadgets in the game. It's basically it's a noise maker you can launch and bounce around a level. Um, and when it hits its uh, when it hits either its end or when you you use the trigger, uh, you can set off a noise. Now I've accidentally brought another guard into this room, so I'm just going to let him kind of check things out. Um, and hopefully he's just gonna yeah he's just gonna have a little look around nothing to see there classic stealth game AI um, it's it's not realistic but it's fun you know it's you, you don't want stealth who are gonna be uh, to pay too much attention you want to be able to predict what they're gonna do so you can do cool stuff so here I've got these two guards they've got their back to me um, but if I try and run into them I'm gonna be seen so I'm just gonna use this noisemaker just to kind of lead them out really uh, make noises in front of them that will draw them out they're gonna investigate that what that is I'm gonna hide in this locker uh, and just kind of wait for them to go back to what they were doing uh, and I've gotten past them. Now, if I can, I'm just going to get back to the checkpoint to save my progress there because I'm doing pretty well. Let's just let them through, save the progress in that checkpoint and hide there. And then I've just got one more gem. You have to collect all the currency in the level. Uh, you've got an AI helper who's, um, who's helping you to kind of simulate these real world locations. Uh, but he has a limited number of assets, so he's using a really rubbish old gem graphic uh, that he has knocking around to represent anything of value. Uh, so here I'm just I'm stealing these objects. These might be cool equipment or whatever in the real world, but actually in our game they are they're floating old school gems. It's just kind of a, a fun thing that the AI kind of does by being a bit stupid, which is part of what the AI is in this game. Uh, so I've completed the level there. I'll, I'll just put something up a little bit more. Uh, uh, more interesting and more purple. Uh, not enough purple in the universe. Uh, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave the bugle there. Here we have uh, a dude patrolling back and forth with a gem in the middle. I'm gonna pick up the oud here. The oud is a it's a sticky noise maker, so it's not dissimilar to the bugle from before. Uh, but you can basically stick it up to a wall and then make a noise. Oh, he's seen me around that corner. Let me just. Uh, I like that you called it the oud. That's a uh, it's a beautiful instrument actually. It's, it's I, on a, a number of records that I really like. Oh, cool. So it's, well, the whole game is like lots of little nods to the medieval kind of setting. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really interesting, um, again, like just writing this and kind of researching Robin Hood and realizing just how many places um, uh, the Robin Hood legends kind of lend themselves to. I'm just going to make a noise there to distract him. Oh, that didn't work. Um, I'm going to leave him for a little while. But the Ud, yeah, basically it's a, a, a noise maker that delays. Um, realizing just how much of the legends actually lent themselves to the game I wanted to make. So for example, um, in the old stories, Robin Hood um, he constantly used um, bugles and noisemakers to not only distract his enemies, I died there, not only to distract his enemies, but also then to, um, to actually um, uh, call in his allies. So he was always known to carry a bugle with him and uh, various instruments and oods. There was always that element 
Uh, minstrels were a big part of the old Robin Hood legends. But here I've got the Folly. Now the Folly is a um, is a tripwire. It's a stunning tripwire. Uh, it's it not just its effect is not impressive. It's uh, it just stuns the player. So as he, uh, the character there. So as I put it down, he's going to go back to his patrol, and he'll walk into it and be stunned, and you can move past him safely. Again, nothing that kills because he's going to wake up very quickly and he's not happy. He's going to investigate. He'll give up because he's a stealth game enemy, um, but he'll he'll go back to his business. Now, what's interesting in the game um, and kind of crucial to what I'm trying to do with this is that um, players are able to edit the the levels. You're able to make your own your own uh, environments uh, and tell your own stories, and it all plugs into the game's voiceover and kind of the storytelling that I'm doing. Uh, hopefully in kind of an organic way. So, you know, if off, a few months after release, the community's invented a bunch of other levels that are maybe even better than the ones in the game, uh, that can become the version of the game that people get. You know, people can distribute uh, those maps to each other. And I'm really, I'm excited to see what happens with that. I'm excited to see whether people make cool stuff with it. It's, they're, they're, they're stored in kind of simple text files that people can, you know, you can email to people or you can use my, use my servers to distribute and share with each other. Um, it's going to be an interesting experiment. It was kind of the most respect requested feature on Thomas Was Alone was how do we uh, how do we make levels for Thomas Was Alone? And the answer was you don't because I'm not a very good programmer. Um, I've gotten a bit better now, so I figured you know I'll let people make their own stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to make some environment here, and it's really straightforward. So you just place down an NPC, maybe have him patrol back and forth. I've only got uh, one in the version I'm showing today, but there's five enemies in the game in total, kind of with different behaviors and stuff. And it's as simple as that. You put down stuff, and it just kind of works. They go on their patrols as you set them out, and you then go and steal from them. So, yeah, hopefully, we'll see, but hopefully it's going to be cool. It's, uh, it's going well so far. It looks neat. I like this whole this trend toward sort of transparency and stealth game design. Like how you guys are showing more, like, the, like Mark of the Ninja, what they were doing. Yeah. You see everything, so it gives you a kind of empowering. That's how you do it. That's it. If, if, if I don't, if I'm with stealth games, either I give the player a gun or I give them awareness. Um, and I want to give them awareness in this. So yeah, Mark of the Ninja is a, a big inspiration, an amazing game. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very flattered at the comparison. It's cool. Yeah, it looks really cool. So this is coming to uh, PS4 and Vita. You were saying hopefully this year? Fingers crossed. Um, we'll see. I've got, I'm very lucky uh, Thomas did well. So uh, <laughs> if we need a little bit longer to kind of iron out the wrinkles, then, uh, then we may well take that opportunity. Um, but yeah, hopefully by the end of the year or, or at the latest kind of early next year. And then a little after that on PC. Right? Yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a month exclusive on PlayStation 4 and Vita. Uh, Sony Rock, um, <laughs> they're pretty cool. Um, and then yeah, PC, Mac, uh, and Steam OS, kind of a month later. And then other platforms, maybe if uh, if they want them, we'll see. We'll see if we'll see if they like the game. Cool. Well, it, uh, it looks really cool. So that's that's volume here from GDC with Mike Bithel. Thanks a lot, Mike. No problem. Thanks. This is a fighter jet, but this thing is your fighter jet. This is Luftrazers. It's an arcade-style shooter where you fly around shooting other planes until either you get blown up or you beat the final boss. 